Okay, folks, we're going we're gonna to get started. Um, my name is Michael Sminovich. I'm the director of the uh, Lighting Center at Davis. I'm a professor here at UC Davis as well. Um, I want to welcome you to the third Don Ahmed Memorial Lecture in Lighting Efficiency. Uh, this lecture series reflects UC Davis and California Lighting Technology Center's mission in sustainability through education and action. And the, the lecture specifically honors the memory of um, CLTC Program Director Don Amon and his visionary outlook in the field of energy efficiency and specifically in, in lighting. Don was the, uh, the Lighting Center's Program Manager who died suddenly in March 2007. Uh, and he represented the ideals of lighting energy efficiency and a passion for sustainability and is very much miss missed by our, by our peers in the lighting industry and those who work at the, at the Lighting Technology Center. And this lecture is, is this lectureship is, is very much about continuing the, the, the memory of, of Don's vision on the mission of energy efficiency and his, his passion and dedication towards engaging those in the, in the lighting industry. And we put together this program over a number of years with the, with the idea that uh, we would bring in the, the, the best and the brightest minds in, in efficiency and leaders in the field to, to come here to Davis to, to speak to us and, and uh, engage with us. Um, uh, and it was really it, consistent with the passion and energy that, that, that Don Allman had. Um, before we start with, 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 with this evening's program, I'd like to introduce uh, Margaret Amon to, to say a few words to, to the group. And I really appreciate her coming here tonight. And I'd welcome you to say a few words. Thank you, Michael. And thank you, everybody, for coming this evening. I really appreciate it. I'm going to just say a few words from a personal perspective. I was uh, just telling a friend this week how when Don would ever go into a building, he would look up. And of course, it was to assess the lighting or anything else related to energy efficiency. He always put on that professional uh, perspective in, in going about the world and finding a way that, thinking of ways that he that could make it better. Uh, although he's been gone over six years, I believe that his energy and spirit live on in those who knew him. And where I see Don's presence the most, of course, is in our two children. So I just thought I would provide a, a little update on them. Uh, to illustrate this, Peter, our son and oldest, is in his second year. He's a junior standing at, um, in mechanical engineering at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. So he's kind of following in his dad's footsteps, although I don't know if he'll go into lighting or energy efficiency per se. Um, but his main extracurricular activity is with the Human Powered Vehicle Club, and he's having a lot of fun with that, as well as uh, road cycling and mountain biking, both of which were passions for Don. So it's really fun to see him enjoying those things. And our daughter Emily graduates from Da Vinci Charter Academy, a high school here in town, and in June. And she's headed to uh, Whitman College in Walla Walla, Washington in August. And um, I expect when she's there, she'll continue to hone her skills in academics as well as community service and leadership and music. All of those were pursuits that were really important to Dawn. So it's really uh, gratifying to see her uh, follow in his footsteps in those ways. And I know Don, of course, would be extremely proud of them, as I am, not just because of their academic success, but for how they live out there and his values in uh, the young adults they're becoming. They work hard, they take their commitments seriously, they're quick to help others, and they enjoy time in the great outdoors. People have started asking me, not surprisingly, what are you going to do with an empty nest next year? And uh, I don't see it so much as empty, because I expect that I will enjoy music and meals and conversation in our home with a lot of other people, friends, family, neighbors, just as Don would have done. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that and to uh, maybe a little more flexibility to get back in the outdoors a little more, because that's something we enjoyed so much together. 
So this uh, lecture series where we learn of cutting edge technologies and new insights into energy efficiency is another very fitting way to honor Don and reflect his values. And from what I've learned so far about Dr. Nakamura, it seems that he works with a lot of the same energy, passion, intensity that Don had. So I think it's very appropriate uh, that he should deliver this year's memorial lecture. I want to thank Michael and Costas and Kelly and all of the CLT CLTC staff and donors for making this event um, possible and continuing it as a tradition in Don's memory. And again, thank you for coming and for continuing your education just as Don would have. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Um, tonight we have the honor of having Dr. Suji Nakamura present on the evolution and future of LEDs and laser diodes. Um, Dr. Suji Nakamura has been a professor at UC Santa Barbara in the materials department since 2000. He's also the research director of Santa Barbara Solid State Lighting Laboratory, um, and he has received numerous awards, most noticeably, notably for his research in the development of bright white LEDs and violet laser diodes. He holds more than 100 patents and has published over 400 papers and continues to lead to innovation in science and engineering. World renowned for his research and development on nitride-based semiconductors, Dr. Nakamura's work includes some of the most important breakthroughs in modern material science, including the very foundation for LED lighting. His innovations and inventions continue to improve the quality and the efficiency of LEDs for lighting and other applications. Um, for this presentation, Professor Nakamura will discuss the past, present, and future of LEDs, laser diodes, including their impact on energy conservation and lighting design. And I think that, especially tonight, our speaker really embodies the shared commitment towards energy efficiency and represents the spirit and ideals of the Don Amund Memorial Lecture in lighting efficiency. And I, I really welcome Professor tonight to, to speak to us. Dr. Nakamura. Thank you. Oh, oh, is it, is it, oh it's okay? Yeah. Okay, uh, thanks so much for uh, great introduction. And also, also thank you much for, uh, thank you for <laughs> inviting me to today's talk. And, uh, so basically, I'd like, to, I'd like to talk about the, what kind of research we are doing at, uh, at UCSB. Uh, um, so at UCSB, we, we have a center, name of the Solid Lighting Energy Center, and uh, we are developing the next generation of uh, lighting. And uh, so today, uh, my talk is basically, uh, at first, I talked about introduction, means the uh, history of uh, development of uh, blue LED and red dial. And uh, next time, same polar uh, LED, but this is too, too much detail for you. I think, uh, roughly, I, I like to talk about what, what we're doing. Uh, and uh, third is also non polar thing, but this is uh, next generation. Uh, if too much detail, you know, just I. I <laughs> I want to talk about a very sim simple model, you know. And uh, so fourth is uh, laser lighting. So at UCS, we are thinking about uh, laser lighting as a next lighting. Because uh, right now, you know, lighting, uh, uh, so it's lighting means LED. But I think the next generation of lighting should be uh, laser lighting. Because laser lighting is current density so high, you know, laser lighting, uh, laser diode, you know. Current density is one kilo, at least one kilo per ampere centimeter. And uh, plug efficiency is uh, blue laser diode, plug efficiency is highest now, almost 50%. At a current density, one kilo ampere, two kilo ampere per square centimeter. LED, you know, when we operate the LED at a current density, one kilo ampere, two kilo ampere, almost no lighting because due to the droop problem. So I think uh, LED has uh, uh, laser diodes that would be, have a great future for the next uh, generation lighting because uh, efficiency is very high at a high current density. 
And uh, so he's also, uh, I like to put a bulk galvanized crystal. Uh, because right now, LEDs, all of the LEDs grown on sapphire side, sapphire or silicon carbide surface. So this is a heteroepitaxial growth. So it means uh, current uh, uh, crystal, means a uh, galvanized crystal, a huge number of dislocations, crystal defects, order of 10 to the eighth, ninth. This causes a big problem when we operate at high color density, also at the high temperature. Because uh, you know, non radical concentrator caused by crystal defect is very active at high temperature. So that's the reason why we have to always cool down the LEDs. You know? But uh, using galvanized substrate, this is homo epitaxial growth, basically no crystal, but, if you, but basically no crystal defect incorporating galvanized on sapphire. So we can operate at high temperature using. Uh, when we make LEDs on gallium nitride surface, because, because no crystal defect. So, so, so in that case, we need gallium nitride surface. So, but right now, no real bulk gallium nitride. So, at the UCSB, we are, you know, developing bulk gallium nitride crystal ourselves using a special growth method, which is called amonosamal growth. And the six, uh, uh, I like to talk about the. Commodities from gallium gallium, I mean gallium gallium, the LED on gallium nitride substrate. Uh, because recently, a uh, uh, company named Sola, uh, Steve, uh, uh, UCS professor Steve Denbas, Jim, and I co founded this company in 2008. And we started uh, uh, this company in 2008. And uh, last year, we started selling the LED on gallium nitride substrate. So this has a unique uh, characteristic. So, so I'd like to talk about this LED uh, six. So basically, uh, uh, <laughs> oh, no laser point, no, it's okay. So, so use na, na, three nitride means we use aluminum nitride, gallium nitride, indium nitride. So we can change the uh, 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 LED emission wavelengths LED from the 200 to uh, 1.5 na, uh, micro nanometer. So we can make uh, UV emitter to the infrared emitters using uh, nitride-based LEDs. So, <laughs> probably you are familiar. So, but right now, uh, LED means uh, visible color from violet to uh, green region using nitride-based materials. So, red LED means we have to use uh, different materials: aluminum, indium, gallium, phosphide. So, this is a. Uh, uh, efficiency of LEDs as a function of developed years. So basically, in the 60s, you know, uh, 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 red LED was uh, uh, invented. And, uh, and, so, and since the 60s, you know, uh, so many people tried to develop blue and green LEDs, because in order to make uh, all, any kind of colors, we need three primary color, blue, green, red LEDs. Uh, but nobody could develop the high efficient blue and green LEDs. So, but in my case, uh, uh, in '93, uh, uh, we could develop a fast, uh, high, high bright, bright blue and also green LEDs. '95 and a yellow color shows the white LEDs. So by mixing of three primary color LEDs, we could develop the white LEDs in '96. And uh, so now, white efficiency white LED is uh, very high. No? So R&D le level is uh, almost 200 lumen per watt, but the mass production level is not, still not so high. Mass production level is, I think, uh, I think between 50 lumen per watt or 70 lumen per watt. That's range, you know, mass production. So currently available white LED means uh, LED lighting means between 50 lumen per watt and 70 or 80 lumen per watt. Almost same as the fluorescent lamp. No? Fluorescent lamp is. Uh, around 70 lumen power. So that is a current performance of the white LEDs, which are commercially available you know, in the market. So this shows uh, just a history of the polar means the sea plane gallium, crystal uh, direction, you know. So <laughs> polar means the sea plane, sea plane, you know. Uh, gallium light has a hexagonal crystal structure, so all of it is grown the uh, sea plane. Sea plane means we also name, you say polar gallium nitride, you know. And uh, so basically in the 70s, you know, in the United States, uh, uh, 
uh, Dr. Maroska and the Punk who dem demonstrated the first uh, blue uh, nitride based LEDs. But uh, this is called uh, metal MIS, a metal insulator semiconductor LEDs, because uh, this is not a PN junction. Because LED means a PN junction, because, but at that time, uh, nobody could make P type gallium nitride. So uh, instead of P type gallium nitride, they used the uh, 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 insulating layer, insulating, the same, semi insulating. So I means insulating layer instead of P type. So it means uh, this is a uh, lot of p uh, junction LEDs. And uh, so in my case, it's uh, 89, I started the uh, uh, gallium nitride uh, uh, research in, at my former company, Nichia. And, uh, and in, 90s, uh, in, in 1990, I developed the uh, uh, Noble 2 flow MOCBD. So initially, I purchased, uh, I bought the commercially available MOCBD which cost two million US dollars. So MOCBD means the cost is, uh, price is almost two million US dollars. So still uh, one million, two million dollars. So at that time, uh, uh, no nitride, uh, there are no uh, MOCBD, uh, which can grow gallium nitrate. So, but anyway, I, purchased, I bought the uh, MOCBD in 90, and I started the gallium nitrate growth. But the, uh, at the time, no, crystal, I couldn't grow any, what's it? Even if I could grow some crystal, color of the crystal was a black color. So gallium nitride should be only transparent color, <laughs> but black color. But also sometimes no crystal growth at all. Uh, so, in this, so from 90s and uh, from um, 89 to, so almost one and a half year, you know, I had to modify the, that uh, $2 million MOCVD for almost four, one, one and a half years. And uh, finally, after many times of modification, I could develop the two-flow MOCBD. So, so this is a uh, two-flow MOCBD. Uh, and uh, this is the uh, most important breakthrough in my life. <laughs> because, uh, uh, because uh, you know, until I could develop this MOCBD, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't have any results, zero. So, but after this invention, uh, every two or three months, I could achieve the, a breakthrough in this field. Every two or three months, uh, until I could uh, form, a country, uh, form a company in 2000, uh, in, in 99. So after quitting my company, still Nietzsche, uh, my former company can, could make the most high efficient LEDs because uh, due to this uh, reactor. This is a homemade reactor. Nobody can copy it, you know. So this is a key because this uh, MOCBD growth determines the uh, uh, internal quantum efficiency of LED. Internal LED efficiency is determined by internal quantum efficiency and light extraction efficiency. So MOCBD growth determines the internal quantum efficiency. So Nietzsche's LED has a still highest internal quantum efficiency. So. But this is not physics, <laughs> but just uh, like uh, what's a mechanical thing. But this is very important. And so, so after this invention of two flame machine in 90, you know, uh, every two or three months I could make a breakthrough, and every two or three months I could publish the paper. So before my this invention, I never published any scientific paper, zero. <laughs> And uh, my degree was also master degree. Not I didn't have a, I didn't have a PhD degree because my former university had no PhD course. My university. So, so after but anyway after this invention, every two or three months I could publish papers. Also same time I could uh, uh, apply the patent. For each papers I could apply maybe three or four patent. You know. So, so, so this is a great invention because at that time, uh, my Nietzsche has usually, you know, part, number of patent is annually zero or sometimes one. So, so no patent. <laughs> yeah, every two, three, every two or three years, one patent, you know. But in my case, every two, two three months, I applied three, four or five patents, you know? so annually 20 or 30 patents. So it's almost like, like this, you know. <laughs> 
So, and so using this two frame CVD and uh, most important, several big breaks is that in 91, I could make P type gallium nitrate using a samara annealing. So, this is very simple uh, samara annealing. So, samara annealing, you know, so at that time, you know, when we doped magnesium to, to make P type gallium nitrate, magnesium. So, this idea was, it was uh, tried in in 71, Professor uh, Dr. Maroska and Pankov already tried to make P-type gallium nitrate using uh, magnesium doping. So when we magnesium, in, we, when we do magnesium into gallium nitrate, it should be acceptable. So it should be, so crystal should become P-type, but it never happened. Always, always, you know, uh, resistivity became semi-initiated, you can understand. So when we do magnesium, resistivity is almost 10 to the 6 ohm cent. Semi insulate, insulatingly. <laughs> so nobody could make P type, uh, low this P type, but uh, just uh, I did uh, thermal annealing using the ambient gas of, in this case, nitrogen. And uh, easily, TGC became low this and P type gamma. It's very simple, no? This is a mystery for the, since, you know, since the 70s, no? Almost uh, 30 years. 30 years, you know, 30 years, many people try to make it, but just some hurting, you know, using a uh, nitrogen appearance, that's it. So in se even for 70, you know, if people try the thermal annealing, you know, in 71, uh, they got the P-type gram, but they never tried the thermal annealing un under the uh, nitrogen appearance, because they worried about the dissociation of the crystals, because uh, they always use the ammonia ambient gas for thermal annealing. Because they worry about the gallium nitrate dissociated to gallium, gallium and nitrogen. So they put, use the ammonia carrier gas. Ammonia carrier gas is called the, the you know, hydrogen passivation. A lot of hydrogen is coming to, into the crystal and hydrogen passivates the, the magnesium active So ammonia ambient gas was not good. <laughs> but anyway, so, so I could make a P-type gallium using summary. So now all, everybody uses summary ring to make P-type gallium. So another big break is that in 92, I could do, grow uh, uh, fast indium gallium nitrate single crystals because indium gallium nitrate is the most important layer because this indium gallium nitrate is an active layer, emitting layer. So by changing our indium composition, we can make blue, green, LED, red layer. So this layer is used for emitting layer. But at that time, nobody could make uh, indium gallium nitrate, which shows a very strong blue and uh, green emission at room temperature. Yeah, maybe 10 groups tried to grow indium gallium nitrate, but uh, no emission at all. But in my case, I told you, using 2 fluorine -mo CBD, it was very easy to grow indium gallium nitrate. So this is active layer. So, this, so by combination of P-type layer and the indium nitrate emitting layer, so we could develop uh, first high brightness blue LEDs in 93. In the 95 also, bio laser diode, which can be used for the blue ray DVD. And uh, also green LEDs in 96. And, uh, and uh, so basically, uh, almost uh, <laughs> so I, I developed blue and green LED everything, so I became boring, so. I tried to challenge a new thing, so I came to the United States, you know. <laughs> That's the story, yeah. So, so after, my, after came, coming to the United States, my former company started a lawsuit against me because uh, my former company asked me to sign NDA when I quit the company, but the UCSB lawyer said, no, you, don't, you shouldn't sign anything because at first, lawyer has to check. A lawyer said, okay, you, you can sign. But, uh, uh, but the problem is that my former company never sent the English version of the NDA, so for, you know, really I couldn't read it at all, so they ne never allowed me to sign. So, so they started a lawsuit against me because I didn't sign NDA, so they said, you are infringing a trade secret, you know? So, <laughs> so, so I became so mad, so... <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so means... <laughs> My dream became the, you know, to overcome former company, you know, for for R and D, <laughs> R and D, not the fighting, you know. So, 
So at UCSB, you know, so we started a new LED. So that is non polar simple. Later I talk about. So basically, so this is the current LED structures. So so I developed the indium galvanite MQ that I, that is the in, indium galvanite MQ that is actively emitting there, also P-type gun. So so this is a typical LED structure, you know, current uh, commercial available sapphire surface. You know, so that's the reason we could develop a high brightness blue green LEDs in '93 and '96. You know. And this is the first indium galvanite LED which shows a strong blue and uh, in this case, violet green, uh, blue LEDs. He published this paper in 92. And this is uh, also first quantum well blue, green, and yellow LEDs. So we could develop the first blue, green, yellow LED in 95. And this is a structure. So still all of the LED company use this structure, very similar structure. So basically, no, no, no difference, you know. Also, we developed the first uh, violet laser diode in 1996, and the emission wavelength is uh, 405, 405 nanometer. And this is uh, this uh, violet uh, laser diode used for Blu ray DVD, but uh, this is not so popular, you know, at this moment because uh, everybody wants uh, <laughs> uh, all of the uh, what's that? Uh, movies direct download using a what you know <laughs> they want to download everything direct so they don't need the DVD anymore. So this is a this thing. So LED application is uh, uh you know already you know so so basically using Garmeter you know we can make uh, power electron devices. Uh, at the UCSB Professor Umesh is uh, is uh, developing the Garmeter based power electron devices and uh, so this is also getting very hot to, for energy efficiency, you know, power electron devices. So white battery material is the best for the power electron devices. So right now, silicon carbide shot key diode or gallium light diode, you know, <laughs> uh, transistor, which I, I don't know which one is better, but they are fight, uh, competing each other. But the future technology should be gallium light diode power electron devices. Also, <coughs> uh, laser diode and solar also. So we also we can make a very good solar cell using gallium lighter, especially for blue and green region, especially blue and violet region, and also LED, you know. So gallium lighter can be used for all kinds of all devices for energy saving. So especially we are focused on uh, uh, lighting application. So, <coughs> so these are conventional lighting. You know, conventional lighting has a lot of problem, you know. Uh, especially fluorescent lamp include uh, mercury, you know. So it's a uh, toxic material, mercury, so. And, uh, you know, so also lifetime is not so long, you know. And, uh, and, uh, so already using, you know, LEDs, we can make a high efficient solid lasting, so. Uh, uh, but especially initially, the huge market for LEDs is uh, uh, backlighting for LCD display, especially for uh, uh, cell phone, uh, cell phone and the smartphone. And but now LED TV, you know, uh, LCD TV use LED for backlighting to save energies. And now and also lighting market become uh, you know this the lighting market become very big. Also, a uh, headlamp, uh, automobile headlamp also would use uh, LEDs for... Also, Beijing Olympic Stadium, this is, you know, also they use uh, LED, uh, LED lighting. So, so this is uh, still, uh, this place is very still popular for Chinese people for sightseeing at night time because the color is so beautiful, color is changing. Still, Olympic is uh, over, uh, already over, but the, very uh, popular place for night time. So already, um, this is the LED market. No? Uh, uh, I don't know what kind of market. <laughs> but uh, this is, uh, you know, 10 billion, but uh, it's okay. So LED TV, you know, uh, uh, so basically, HCTV uh, for so for backlight they use LED because uh, initially previously they use a cold fluorescent lamp, but the in comparison to cold fluorescent lamp, uh, 
using LEDs, uh, energy consumption becomes almost half. So that's the main reason they use LEDs. So uh, this is uh, for energy efficiencies. For lighting application, uh, we need a uh, white, white, light, white light. And uh, so there are many ways to make white. Right, uh, but the most popular technique is this one, uh, blue LED plus phosphor. So currently, a white LED in this one. But uh, our company, uh, our company Solar, no? <laughs> we co-founded in Tucson. We use the uh, 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 four, five, nine, uh, four, four, ten nanometer violet LED to excite uh, phosphors. So in this case. Uh, CRI, color rendering index, is much better uh, because uh, uh, all of color, visible color, be, uh, be come from the phosphors. So all, all, we, we can make all kinds of spectrum, almost uh, close to the sunlight. So CRI is very good. And uh, so another technique is uh, just mixing of blue, green, red LEDs. But uh, in this case, the uh, cost is very high uh, because we need three LEDs. Also, you know, we need a special controller. You know? It costs a lot. So uh, for lighting, it means uh, right now mainly this one. But uh, I think uh, next generation is, uh, you know, you'll be excited uh, white now. So, so this is uh, just the one out the outdoor lighting, you know. So in this case, they use a solar cell inside and also battery, and the white LED is operated by solar cell, you know. And so this is a totally clean energy, you know. Also, China, they use the, the LED street light, but that, that uh, is uh, operated by wind energy and the solar cell, you know. <laughs> Top is wind, wind you know. Wind. And the second one is solar cell, and uh, you know, so so they, uh, and th so these uh, clean energy technology is very popular in this other country because no uh, uh, electricity, so so they use uh, solar solar cell and battery plus white LEDs to make uh, lighting uh, at night time. So. So South countries, they have no electricity. So South countries, uh, they like to use uh, this solar cell battery plus white LED technology, green technology, because it's low energy. So, so South country is very popular. So for this system is very, very sold in South country because uh, so they have used the kerosene. Kerosene is very expensive now, you know. Oil means very expensive. So every month they have to pay Ten dollar or twenty dollar to buy, purchase the kerosene, and but uh, using solar cell battery plus white LED, just uh, initially they invest the uh, ten dollar or twenty dollar to buy this system, and no more, you know. So very very cheap. So that's the reason this uh, system is very very popular for the third country. But in that country already everywhere there is electricity, so they don't need solar cell, you know. <laughs> they, so they, they are everywhere they are plugged. So. So South country, you know, sales is very good, this one, this technology. And so, so this is a comparison of the how much power uh, energy uh, is, uh, you know, saved using white LEDs. So just uh, in, co in comparison is uh, 60 watt incandescent lamp, almost uh, energy consumption, one tenth. In this case, brightness is 800 lumens. And, uh, so this is uh, our roadmap of the uh, efficiency of the white LEDs. And uh, so you can see uh, you know, white LEDs, you know, this one. So you can see efficiency is exponentially increasing because this is a semiconductor technology. So we can design the structure, everything. So you can see, you know, <laughs> but the, you know, all the technology of the you know, conventional lighting is almost technology saturated, so no more increase. So, so know that we, we could replace all of the lighting uh, in the future, you know, in order to save energy. Uh, probably, you know, this is, uh, so in California, you know, electricity consumes almost, uh, electricity consumption, you know, this shows, uh, and lighting consumes almost 30% uh, of the, all of the consumption of electricity in, the, in California, you know. Uh, 
by replacing the this uh, this is a DOE estimate, you know, by by using LEDs for have a, almost a, you know in 2030 uh, the electricity consumption for this lighting for lighting you know for lighting I say so for energy consumed for lighting become almost uh, half in, in t t t uh, 2030. So the, this is DOE's uh, uh, you know estimate so. So all of the country made the regulation, no more inconsiderable bulb lamp, and uh, compact, they have to, uh, so people have to select a compact cross lamp or LEDs. But uh, now, you know, uh, all people are interested in using LEDs, not a, not a compact cross lamp, because compact cross lamp is uh, uh, including mercury, also glasses, it's breakable, and the value is more, you know. But the only difference is uh, price. LED is still expensive. Uh, but the new technology can reduce the cost of the LED dramatically, uh, especially for using gallium light substrate, uh, uh, later I talk about. So, you know, right now, uh, LED, you know, how much? So cheapest one is, uh, recently, is selling the price of $10 for 400 lumen, per, 400 lumen uh, you know, uh, LED bulb lamp, the four, uh, just $10. But the compact price lamp is still how much? Uh, I don't know. Depends on, you know, what, between one dollar, two dollar, something, you know. So still expensive, but uh, still uh, cost of LED reducing, so I think, uh, I think uh, it can replace all of the conventional lighting with LEDs. Okay, so UCSB work is, uh, I think, <laughs> too much. So UCSB, we have a solid state lighting energy center, so, so this center, you know, uh, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven professors are involved. Seven, and uh, so Professor Steve Denbas work for the MOC, uh, LED laser dial and solar cell, and uh, Professor Jim Speck is a uh, uh, work for the characterization of the materials, and uh, also he works for uh, MB gloss for gallium nitride gloss, and the cross bias is a uh, he's a. Uh, uh, Inside, he worked with photonic, photonic crystals using garment. Now he is uh, uh, recently Jim Speck and Claude Bice uh, did a press release uh, because uh, OJ combination. He you know recently found the OJ combination you know from the blue LEDs. So there the hot discussion uh, because uh, you know droop is caused by OJ combination or carrier overflow. But the reason that they found the OJ combination contributed to the, you know, OJ combination caused the droop, mainly, you know. So, so, so basically, these two people also work for the uh, characterization of the material and the devices. And Chris Fandiabas, Professor Chris Fandiabas, focused on the theory of the uh, device and the materials. And the Ram Cesar is developing the new phosphors because uh, we need the uh, phosphors, you know high efficient phosphor to make white, white LEDs. Uh, so next is a non porous So this is a different crystallization. Uh, so I told you, so, so right now all of LED laser companies, the C plane, uh, so C plane is uh, uh, crystal, so this is a hexagonal crystal, so C plane is the top of the plane. And, uh, but the non polar same polar, different crystal relation. So we, you know, different crystal, different crystal from the C plane. And uh, so we started this program, non polar same polar uh, gun, to create a highly efficient LEDs in order to replace the conventional C plane. So in that case, we can change the whole world of LED laser diode again. So that is, uh, you know, we started this one. Uh, for personally, I told you, personally, I, you know, my dream was to overcome <laughs> my former company. So, so it's totally different. So if it happened, this is a true, we can change the whole world again. So, so basically, you know, uh, so this is a crystal structure, so hexagonal crystal. So C plane is the top plane. So right now, all of LED companies, laser companies, C plane to make LED laser dials, also uh, electron device, power electron devices, they use C plane. But the non-polar is just a side wall, you know, side wall, M plane, Y plane. And the same polar is the oblique plane. 
So many kind of overly plain. So, so that, that is why we use uh, we select uh, non-polar, same polar is a uh, rather non-polar C plane is this one. This is a uh, uh, an in the quantum well. So in this case, you know, due to the strong polarization, uh, quantum well energy is bended like this. So in this case, red is electron and blue is a hole. So overlapping the wave function of electron and hole becomes small. They are separated because electron and hole are separate. So they cannot recombine radiatively because they are separated due to the strong polarization. But in the case of non -polar, no polarization, so in this case, wave, overlapping wave function of electron and hole is very large. So, so radial recombination is very good. Uh, <laughs> you know, so because the electron and hole exists the same place, but in this case, not a different place. So, so that's the reason. So, and uh, I skip the <laughs> detail one because of no time. And, and uh, so. And we started the non-polar, same-polar LEDs in 2001. And so first five years, this is the efficiency of LEDs, almost zero. Zero. But in 2007, uh, 2007, we made a big breakthrough, and the efficiency became almost 50 percent. So first five years, almost zero. And, uh, but, you know, we continue the research. And the student, you know, PhD student has to Publish a paper, and uh, you know even efficiency is zero. But the student could publish paper because uh, they could find a strange phenomena or something. But uh, also same time we ask the uh, student every time when they want to publish a paper, please write a patent. Now without the patent, no paper at all. And the student complained, this is efficiency zero, no meaning, you know. But we ask the student write a patent every time when they, they come to my office. You know, I want to publish the paper. No, without patent, no, no. And uh, those patents are now basic patent of the non-polar, simple device. Because after you know, 2007, we announced this high efficient non-polar, simple. Many groups joined this field, and they started the right patent too late. No, so I think for non-polar, simple, uh, uh, you know, material device, we have uh, tons of uh, IPs. So. So this, uh, oh, this uh, you know, style is typical for the R&D, I think. And we made the first, uh, we could make first non-polar uh, laser dial too. And, uh, so, so I want to comment this one, droop. Uh, so, so droop is, a, so right now, this is a blue LEDs. So, uh, you know, this shows the at power as a function of the current density of blue LEDs. So power is gradually, so at power should be increased linearly, but uh, for nitride blue LED, always power is uh, gradually saturated. So this is called droop. So when we plot the efficiency as a function of current density, efficiency is gradually reduced, you know. So this efficiency gradually reduced, we call this is droop. Droop. So, so this is the biggest problem with the LEDs. So right now I told the LEDs, uh, very expensive. The, one of the biggest reasons is this droop. Because uh, in order to make very bright LEDs, we want to increase the, for example, chip size of LED, this one. By increasing the current, you know, input power, you know, we can make bright, bright, you know. We want to input, input by increase the input power right now. Typical one, one input power is uh, one watt or two watt. But we can put the same size chip. We can input power, you could about 10 watt, 100 watt. We can make bright one, but the cost is same, chip size is same. But we cannot, because due to this problem, we can we increase the current density is further from the more than, you know, like this, current density becomes 300, 400, almost efficiency zero, no out power. So that's the so we have to know. So currently, current density is operating current density around 30 ampere per centimeter. So you can buy a blue and green and all white. Always current density around 30 or 40, peak efficiency around 30 or 40 ampere per segment. So to make blue, you know, br bright lighting, they have to use a lot of module. Each module is uh, this, I don't know this, uh, one, one, well, chip size one millimeter by one but each, each module, no? So they use a 10 or, so basically they increase the chip size. 
to keep the same current density to make a bright, you know, increase the lumens. So chip size become a large means uh, cost become a huge. If there are no droop, we can increase, use a same small chip to make a brighter. So in that case, we can reduce the cost dramatically. So th this droop is a hot topic in this field. So, so the re main reason is that right now, you know, there are two main reasons, OJ recombination or uh, carrier overflow. So I told so recently at UCSB, Professor Jim Speck, Claude Bass found that the, so OJ recombination is the main reason. So, uh, so that's the theoretical, you know? so, uh, so this is a typical one. You can see this blue LED as a function of current density. So at low current density, you know, like this, um, two ampere, three ampere, six ampere. Efficiency is very high, but the increase in current you know, efficiency becomes very small. So this is the biggest problem, and I want to skip this one. But uh, using the same polar plane LEDs, so recently, UCSB, we found uh, using the same polar plane, uh, the loop is very small, up to current density, 400 ampere per square meter, this efficiency as a function of current density. Up to 400 ampere per square meter, almost small decrease, no? using semi-polar plane, different crystallization. But the C plane, I told you, 70 ampere almost, you know, reduction 20, but the 400 is almost zero. So by changing a crystal orientation, no, the loop becomes much smaller. So this is a, a, a theoretically reasonable too, uh, because OJ recombination is contributed to the loop means, uh, you know, uh, using a simple plane, we can reduce the color density, you know, basically. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to skip this one. So, <laughs> it's okay. I won't skip this one. <laughs> Too much detail. So, laser diode application. So, laser diode application, laser diode. And uh, so, laser diode, same thing. Uh, so, so, LED, you know, I told you, for only available color was red color. So, laser diode, same. Uh, available color, only red. Red, color, red laser. So, Usually pointer means red color, because no blue laser diode, no green laser, so only red, red laser diode. So, but the same thing happening using nitride-based material, we can make, now we can make blue and green laser diode. Green laser diode, recently green laser diode available, so now also laser diode, all the market become, would become huge. Nobody knows the market size. Because up to now, no blue, no green laser diode. Now blue and green laser diode available, so we can make any kind of colors using laser dial now. So, so amazing. So, so there's a consumer electronics show last time in uh, when last time in Las Vegas, just a couple of months ago. You know, uh, some, uh, LG uh, my memory, LG demonstrates the 100 inch uh, projectors using laser dial, blue laser dial plus phosphors, and just a projector, no small projector here. And uh, they show the 100 inch projector. It, it's TV, almost a resolution looks TV. It's real. But the uh, biggest difference is uh, <laughs> 100 just projector, I mean, the small box is here, and 100 is. So, cost is, uh, is very cheap. Just, uh, just we need a laser and a blue laser and phosphor. Uh, best one is the blue green laser dial, but uh, you know, so basically, now three prime laser dialogue, we can expect a huge market. So, uh, one application display, also, you know, uh, and also, I told you, at the UCF, we, have, we are interested in the laser lighting too. Uh, uh, and, uh, so, same thing. so blue green. So, for example, when we make uh, TV, TV using laser diode, blue green laser, di blue green red laser diode, uh, color become most beautiful because uh, laser is, uh, you know, <laughs> spectrum is just almost uh, very narrow. So, it means the location is the edge of the chromatic diagram. But the LED is uh, there's a spectrum we use, so a little bit inside, you know. So laser TV, laser TV should be the most beautiful display when you make a laser. So, you know, uh, and uh, so now three plane laser are available, so we can make beautiful TV and uh, small uh, for cell phone. You can make uh, 
small TV, no? Using cell phone, smartphone. And uh, so in the case of laser diode, you know, non-polar sample is better because, <laughs> because uh, using a non-polar sample again become uh, almost uh, four times, four times, five times higher than the C plane laser diode. Again, is uh, four times or five times higher than the C plane laser diode. So, so non-polar samples are best to make blue and green laser diode. I will skip this. <laughs> so recently we could demonstrate the simple green laser diode at UCSB. So this uh, we haven't published yet, but the, this is the latest result. So we can make real uh, true green laser diode using simple plane. So also recently we demonstrated the uh, big cell, but cavity surface emitting laser using a non-polar plane. Non-polar plane. Uh, I want to skip this one. But the other group use the C plane. Other group, Nichia and uh, Panasonic is a C plane. C plane is uh, this plane. So in this case, C plane, uh, you know, they demonstrate big cell vertical cavities. Vertical cavities have emitting laser diode. The process is the same as LED. So we can reduce the cost of laser diode dramatically. Also, we can increase using array. We can make a high power rate, like a 1 watt to 10 watt, 100 watt laser diode using big cells. So, but the problem is uh, C plane is, uh, you know, three group demonstrated C plane big cells, but the, uh, I should just result. So, so apart the uh, C plane big cells, C plane big cells, uh, this, uh, this uh, arrow shows the uh, direction of the polarization. They can control, control the polarization, so when they make array of the big cells, direction of the polarization is random. Direction of random, randomly, so total array. <laughs> So direction of the polarization random is a no meaning, no? For the other. But uh, using a non-polar big cell, uh, polarization direct each, other, each uh, big cell shows the same direction of the polarization. So this is a big advantage of the big cell. So this is a real uh, big cells. So non-polar, also same polar, same. Uh, yeah. So this is a real one. So, so big cell means uh, definitely know that non-polar and the same polar big cell because of the direction of the polarization. So, so each one, each, this each array is a very small. This uh, each array is a size is a 10 micro, what, uh, 10 micron diameter. So, so one millimeter by one millimeter, we can make how much? 1,000, 10,000 array of the, each one emit one, mil, one milliwatt, but the, you know, make arrays, it become 10 watt, 100 watt. But also process similar to LED, so we can do the cost of laser light, laser light using big cells. And uh, so laser lighting, uh, so laser lighting is, uh, you know, uh, is uh, initially when uh, Osram demonstrated laser lighting for headlamp for the automobile. Uh, but the advantage of the laser, light, laser lighting is uh, higher current density. So LED is uh, light light operated less than, I think, 30 ampere or uh, 40 ampere per square centimeter, but highest than 100 ampere per square because due to the droop problem, efficiency becomes small, no? They can't increase the current density. But in the case of laser diode, you know, up to 10 kilo ampere, no problem, efficiency is still very high. <laughs> so, so it means uh, using small chip, you know, we can make very bright lighting. So, uh, we, so we, we demonstrated uh, just uh, recently laser lighting, you know, but still, just a color rendering index, not the CR is very poor, but the just demonstration, no? And uh, so uh, this is not to talk about the current density, no? So basically, laser dye is operating current density up to, you know, five kilo amperes. And, you know, so, so just beginning, you know, we recently we started this laser lighting, you know, we, we, Got this idea of lighting, you know. Uh, okay, so bulk element crystal. So, <laughs> so, so right now, you know, so left side is a two inch sapphire substrate, and this is a available gallium light, uh, gallium light. This is a non polar simple gallium light. So it's very small. So, but uh, I told you, so gallium light, we need a gallium light substrate to make real. Good LED, you know, and uh, but uh, there are no bulk gallium light right, right now, so we use ammonium thermal gloss technique to make bulk gallium. Light. This is a high pressure gloss. Uh, pressure is 2,000 atm, and the temperature is around 600. 
And uh, so we, but uh, se there are several methods to make a uh, uh, bulk element, but, uh, but uh, I think we think uh, Amor Summer is the best. So. so we got the first crystals in 2006, and the initial color was black and uh, small size. And uh, 2008, 9, and uh, and the recent result is uh, this one. Oh, we go to this crystal, formulator signals, and uh, also color is almost transparent. But the uh, center region is a blue, blue color. This is uh, caused by seed. Seed crystal, uh, seed region is a uh, color is strange, but other uh, growth region is a uh, beautiful color, almost transparent. And uh, size determines the inner diameter of the chamber. Inner diameter is uh, uh, one inch, so. Only we can get small crystal, but the increase the size of the chamber, we can we could make a big crystal now. And uh, you know, okay. Uh, so next, I talk about the, uh, our company Sora. So we we co-founded the company Sora uh, to use the UCSB invention to make gen next generation LED and laser diode. And uh, Costa Venture is a key you know, investors, and uh, we started the company in 2008, and uh, so initially we, we started the Kai and Sora, two companies. Kai is for laser dials, and Sora is for LEDs. And, you know, 2000, so using gallium lighter substrate, you know? And but uh, it's complicated, so we merged the two companies to one, and in 2011, you know, and uh, now it's a uh, both company merged and the company name is Sora and uh, and uh, so now now mainly we are making a product of LED now uh, not LED uh, MR16 lamp and uh, so it was uh, for first generation LED grown on sapphire and sequence this is called heteroptical growth uh, so right now all of the LED is grown on uh, all of the LED grown on sapphire or silicon carbon side. so recently some group uh, make LEDs on silicon substrate. This is called, called the heteroptical growth. But uh, Sora thinks the second, second generation is uh, grown on gun substrate. This is called homo, homo epitaxial growth. So this is a uh, current LED structure. You can see on surface, LED structure grown on surface. So a lot of crystal defects you can see, you know, 10 days. So this is called a big problem at, the, at high temperature operation. And uh, let's skip it there. But when we grow LEDs, grow LEDs on garments, no crystal defects, homo epitaxial growth. It's beautiful, no? So in this case, uh, basically no, uh, no large concentrated, so it's possible to, we can operate this LED as, uh, at high temperature and high current density. And uh, so Sora made the Triangular shaped LED you know, to, to improve the light extraction efficiency. And you can see, so this is a TM, no crystal defects. This is a conventional LED, a lot of crystal defects you now. And uh, triangular shaped LED, and uh, this too much there. So, so this is a real LED, so triangular shaped LED to increase the light extraction efficiency. So light extraction is almost 90%. And uh, so, so using this uh, gun substance, they can increase the operating current density up to one kiloampere since square centimeter. So high current density operation is okay. Also, also at high temperature, because no crystal defect in comparison on sapphire. But on sapphire, you know, this is uh, Nietzsche's result. You know, you can Nietzsche triangle. Nietzsche's result, blue LED is, uh, Due to droop, you know, efficiency becomes smaller, not high current operation. So, they, so conventional sheep plane LED cannot be operated at, at, under high current density. But uh, this is, uh, we say, gun on gun LEDs. Uh, high current density operation is okay. So, using small chip, we can operate high current density. So, using small chip, we can make bright LEDs. So, means we can reduce the cost of LEDs. Because uh, ideas like this, LED, LED lighting cost is, you know, we say just a dollar per lumen. Dollar per lumen. Dollar per lumen is most important to, to talk about the cost of the lighting or LED module. Dollar per lumen. So initial target is five dollar per kilo lumen, no? So example is that for, 
for, for example, using this gun uh, gun, we can increase the input power, no? So it means we can increase the lumens. So when we make the same, for example, uh, 400 lumen incandescent bulb lamp, in our case, chip size is very small. So even the chip size is the same, we can increase the lumen. Input power is 10 times higher, no? So lumen becomes 10 times higher. So it means the dollar lumen becomes one-tenth in comparison to LED on sapphire. But the, but the gun, gallium size is very expensive. But the contribution of the gun substrate is very small when we make LED lighting. Contribution of the substrate is maybe a few percent, you know? Even the gun substrate is around 10 percent, doesn't matter. Most important, the dollar per room. Increase the lumen almost 10 times, cost become one tenth. So, so also, so also with the violet, you can see this is a red curve shows a conventional white lighting. So blue LED, there is a blue LED except uh, white. But using the violet, violet color to make, to make white, you can see, uh, you know, color rendering index is much higher. So you can see the solar one is, uh, you know, covers uh, from 400 to 700 nanometer. But uh, using blue LED, you know, blue LED, the 90 CR, 80 CR, that is blue LEDs. In that case, there is blue, so no violet color, also no, no red region. Also, missing color is uh, how much? 480 region, no, no, no color. But using violet, you know, uh, we can cover the whole thing. So CR is uh, color render index becomes 95. So color quality is much better too. Also, so MR16 is the most hardest lamp to make to using, uh, you know, Nobody could make uh, the MR16 using LED because it's very hard. Because the uh, size of LED lighting is very small, you know, we cannot put a lot of LED module because uh, we make, uh, for example, 500 lumen. <laughs> you know, we need a lot of module because to reduce the uh, uh, current density. So they couldn't make it. Uh, but using a uh, gallium light substance, you know, we can increase the input power so we could make it, you know, using LEDs, so. So this is, an, so conventional MRC is they put the, one, two, six, oh, how much, oh. Seven or eight LED module to reduce the uh, current density due to droop, but uh, using a gun, you know, just one LED module. So in this case, you know, shadow is uh, just one shadow, but, uh, so this is, in this case, shadow is, you know, seven or eight, you know, so, so this is a halogen MR16, conventional MR16, so mirror is not so good. So better than conventional halogen MR16, so using uh, LED, you know. Also, size becomes much smaller because, uh, you know, we can, we can use a ch small chip. So I think, uh, uh, so basically, I, I tell you, so, so non-polar, same-polar LED device, uh, we have to use gallium light substrate, you know. So gallium light substrate is, I think, uh, the best, best substrate, no doubt, for, to make any kind of device for LED, laser diode, and, uh, and the solar demonstrated already demonstrates that gallium light is the best to make LEDs. So I think the next generation LED laser diode, uh, uh, People use, have to use uh, gallium cells, especially for crystal orientation, so non-polar or same-polar crystal orientation. And uh, in that case, you can reduce the cost of the uh, LED dramatically, you know. I think that's it, my talk. And uh, are there any questions? Yeah, that's it. Your question is, uh, what, what, I, I can understand, so. so. So what I understand is, yeah. is you, you were describing earlier 
the issue of, of, of droop yes. as, as the current increases yes. uh, or current density increases. Um, what, and, and, and you had a, a, a theory about um, you know, what, what the, uh, yes, yes. The, the mechanism yes. was. The yeah. other issue for LEDs appears to be the issue of lumen depreciation, re reducing light output over time for the same current density. Oh, uh, uh, same kind of at the time in the, even you talking about the lifetime you're talking about? Yeah, the lifetime, you know, like the LD70, you know, so over time. Oh, lifetime, no. Uh, life, lifetime is very complicated. That's not how, uh, uh, lifetime, uh, uh, you know, lifetime of LED is, is basically determined by the, not the LED chip. LED chip is uh, okay, but the main lifetime is determined by the plastic, plastic because we use epoxy or silicone molding. Plastic already degraded the blue LED, blue light. So, you know, when lifetime became very bad, you just, uh, you, uh, you, you can, re by removing the plastic, light out but recovers. Oh, okay, so. <laughs> LED so chip itself is okay. It's uh, the encapsulant and, yeah, the, and capsulant. the lens that yes. uh, becomes more opaque Yes, all, all the physics of the droop also is uh, basically caused by the now, droop, droop, a uh, droop is caused by the uh, Ogilvy combination. Ogilvy combination, I don't know your name, but so Ogilvy combination is basically by increasing current density, if carrier density becomes higher, carrier, carrier density becomes higher, Ogilvy combination becomes dominant. Uh, and uh, so by reducing current density, uh, carrier density, we can minimize the uh, Ogilvy combination. By reducing carrier density, not current density, carrier density. And, uh, so, for in the case of a C plane, C plane, you know, due to the polarization, either bended like this, carrier separated. So, in that case, uh, carrier, uh, lifetime of the uh, radiative combination is very long because carrier is separated, you know? So, so like a boyfriend, girlfriend, they are far away, they contact each other, it takes a long time, you know? They live in the Japan, girl lives in the United States, boy lives in Japan. It takes a long time to be there. But uh, they live at the same time, they recover easily, you know? So, but uh, in the case, no polar same polar, they electron hold the same place, easily recover. So, carrier time is very short. So, when, you know, carrier has injected the active layer, non same polar, but carrier easily recover. So, carrier time is very short. So, it means that uh, even the same current, Carrier density in the activity has become very small using non polar simple because easily to combine. Mm -hmm. But on C plane, it takes longer, a lot of carrier density, so easily ogenic combination happen. So using non polar simple, we can minimize the uh, ogenic combination and then we can minimize the droop. So th that's the physics. Yeah. And, and, what, and related to that, it appeared that your um, gallium nitride cell for the Sora um, cell. It looks like, it, it, is it using a lot more material? The pictures appear to be making it look like you had a, had a larger or a thicker um, yes, yes. structure. Yes, uh, yes, yeah, we use a gallium light surface. So, so consumers, uh, gallium light is uh, much larger. But, uh, but I told you, uh, contribution of the cost of the substrate is only a few percent who make LED lighting. Okay. Even the, uh, using gallium light, cost of the substrate become 10 times higher. But it's a we find we do know, so almost nothing. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Really interesting talk, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question about the uh, Sora product that you're coming to market with um, to replace the 50 watt halogen lamp, is that correct? The yeah, MR16? The no, no, latest one is the 60 watt and 75 watt. Yeah, recently we did a press release uh, just uh, one month ago at the lighting fair in Philadelphia. Now, Sora is, uh, is uh, selling the uh, 65, uh, 65 watt equipment and 75 watt equipment. So Each two, are, uh, two different watt. powers then, 65 yeah. and? Yeah, 75 watt. 75. Right, yeah. And how many watts are the, these are direct replacement product, right? Yes, yes. How, how many watts are the um, Sora products? Assuming the, the luminous yes, flux uh, is the same. Yes, using those, uh, they, they say that they can reduce the energy from 85 percent reduction of the uh, uh, 85 reduction of the energy, so consuming energy. So, so that means uh, 80, um, 
only two, uh, 15 percent, so the 75 watt meter matched by 0.15, so how much, I don't know. So 85 percent is reduced, energy is reduced. So, <laughs> so the consume the 15 percent of the seven, 15 percent. 15 watts. No, the 15 percent, percent of the 75 watts. 15 percent, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. So if there's no more questions, I want, yeah. I want to thank yeah. um, Professor Nakamura for thank an you. excellent talk. Very much enjoyed it. Thank you. 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 So, so folks, um, we have re refreshments and, and, and food outside. And so what I'd like to do is, is reconvene in the, in the hall. And um, the uh, professor will be here for a short period. So if you want to sort of reach with him on a one-to-one -one question, please do so. So again, thank you very much. I want to thank our, our sponsors. I want to thank UC Davis, uh, the California Energy Commission, Pacific Gas and Electric, and all, and all of our industry supporters for, for making this, uh, making this fu function. And, and thank you so much, Margaret, for coming out this evening. And thank you, Professor. Thank you. <laughs>